Yo, do us a favor and yourself a favor by hitting that subscribe button. Make sure to tap that notification bell as well so you can stay updated. Now let's get to the video. This is Illinois Radio with Biko, Illinois Jones, and Pretty Riot going down right now. Welcome to Chicago's most valuable radio station, Illinois Radio, man. It's your boy Everyday J in the building. I got Radio Raheem in the building with me. I got the bro Smash Cash in the building. Squad. And we also got the CEO of Hip Hop Littles, Modelo, in the building, man. How you feeling, bro? Yo, what's, what's up? good? What's good? What's good? How you all feeling? Man, can't Chilling. complain. Can't complain, Chilling. man. Yeah. I'm blown. <laughs> it's a windy motherfucking city, Joe. Y'all ain't yeah. y'all 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 act like y'all ain't felt that wind outside. Hey, man, you act like you ain't been in Chicago for a minute, man. <laughs> All my right. life. All I'm saying is, if you're under a certain weight class, you might not want to be outside. Hey, oh hold, my on, life. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Any niggas running there, yo? Y'all wigs is gone. Y'all little bodies is getting flew all over the place. I mean. Yeah. My little car almost got flipped over today. Man. I ain't going to lie. See, you know, you, you, you small like that, you got to ride something nice, big body. You know what I mean? Well, Can't I'm rocking a big here. body. Eh. Look, 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 <laughs> mandatory, right? <laughs> All right, Mandela. Check it out. Let's start with where you from, bro. Me, personally. I'm from Chicago, from 63rd. Born and raised? Rockwell, yeah. What was it like growing up where you, you feel me, grow up at? Uh, I mean, for me, you know what I'm saying, mainly, it was definitely, like, the trenches, you feel me? So, like, on our end, I'm, like, on a, on a uh, west side of western, so I'm, like, from the other end. Yeah, I know exactly where you at. Yeah, you know I mean, so, like, um, 63rd Rockwell, it was... So, you is from 63rd? <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Shout out to all my 6th trade people, yo, hold on. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. I lived on 63rd and Rockwell for a second. Yeah. Yeah. I am yeah. all my people from over there, so I've been over there for a long time. Okay. Uh, look, she look like she finna start asking names. You remember Ray Ray? Like, yeah, yeah, you remember yeah. Lil Rock? Lil Rock, yeah. my people, all my, all all my like, family from over there. She might know my people for real. Like you know my, my cousin Kenny had that barber shop right there on the tray. The on dark Rockwell. skin dude. Yeah, he went to Harper. I ain't go to Harper, no. I mean, he went to Harper. Oh, yeah, Kenny, yeah, 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 yeah. I know Kenny. See, yeah. look, you see. Y'all might not. Uh, but your family uh, might know my brothers know. more, though, because I'm the baby of the family. So okay. everybody know my family, and they yeah. kind of know me, but, you know. So yeah, she always try to tell I'm the baby of the family. <laughs> you know, yeah. over there it's like a, a diverse area. You feel me? You got yeah. you got blacks and Mexicans over there. You True feel enough. me? Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know if it was if it was difficult to move around like that. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. I, what I would ask is like, what was some of the the lessons you learned? You know what I'm saying? Growing up over there. Uh, growing up in my hood is like okay. So like with the with the diversity as far as like the Hispanics and the African Americans, like. It was like across the border, so like California was the borderline. Okay, you know what I'm saying. Okay, so we call that across the border. So anything on the other side was more so Hispanic. Yeah. Um, me, I learned the cultural difference. You know what I'm saying? Being over there, um, honestly, like being on my end, it was like you know you look at like what we do, how we live, our lifestyle on a day to day basis. And then you really cross the border is real life, like a whole different type of entity. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So. When you over there, you know, you kind of growing up and you living the lifestyle, it's just like you you learning how to adapt to different cultures, you know what I mean, and understanding, like, languages and, you know, personality traits. So for me, it was like I understood, like, what it's like to be in the hood because I, like, grew up in the hood. I was in the streets a lot, you know what I mean? My family was, like, all through it, all yeah. through there. So I learned, like, being over there, like, learning the cultures, learning the lifestyle, Learning how to survive, learning how to adapt to different people, and just being, you know, um, just just different. You know what I mean? Just not trying to stay like, take bond yourself to basically like being in the hood. You know what I mean, like, oh yeah, you have to be like this. You know what I'm saying? It don't suspend you as a personality. You know, so that's kind of like what was like one of the main things that I learned was how to adapt to different people. Okay. Yeah. Now I got a question because I I don't know what your age range is, and none. Like, yeah. Cause I remember that area too. Now, were you there before the projects were towed down? Because I noticed how the area changed mm-hmm. a little bit as well. As far as once they brought all them low enders over, shout out all yeah. my low end people and stuff <laughs> yeah, like yeah. that. But I, I know the I, I, I know the difference. Yeah. You know what I mean? The big difference. Were you around during that time? Uh, or was you a shorty at that time? Nah, or? I mean I was a shorty around okay. that time. Okay. But I, I know what you're talking about. Uh-huh. Yeah. Now what was your what was the difference to you as far as once you start seeing them come over there? And- like when I okay because like me personally like I grew up over there and then like my 
my parents and everything. Like we moved like a little bit further down. Okay. Like Claremont, like on the other side. Uh-huh. Of the yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, but like from there, it's like I still go back to the hood. Right? right. So like when I actually got older to the point like a teenager, and then they start like bringing all uh like the people from the, from the Jacks over there on this side. Like it was it was a big difference because we in all hood like everybody knew each other already. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. you get all the new people over there. It's kind of like they trying to adapt to what our culture and what mm-hmm. we have going on in our hood, mm-hmm. and they kind of like bringing like they, they fool mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying over to what we got going on. So at the same time, it's like we all we always like one thing about the hood that I love about the hood is like people always look at it like. Like the hood is the worst thing ever, and it's not. Like we really embrace people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, and like we don't really be looking for the animosity and the beef. We really just look to you know bond with people because you don't never know who's who, right? Exactly. And everybody brings something different to your, you know, what I'm saying your personality and your environment. So when they did come over there, it was kind of like every they came in tough. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Like they, yeah. Came, yeah. Yeah, 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 they came in tough. So it was like you know we looking at it like yo, you know. Everybody over here Know each other Right You know what I'm saying So right. whoever you beef with You beefing with everybody For real You know Everybody mm-hmm. gonna know What time it is Right So you know At the same time Once you know I've lost a lot of homies Over different people Coming in You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying I got a homie right now Doing life over a situation Okay You know what I mean That he jumped in From somebody that came From the from the jacks so, mm. You know what I'm saying It's sad but it You know it, it takes its place Right You know what I mean Especially in our community man yeah. Which is a sad situation And stuff like that yeah. Now how was you able To separate yourself Like did you get into Kind of like the gang life Before You know you yeah. saw The light at the end Of the tunnel Or was it like You know you kept Yourself yeah. separated From all that Um Well me personally like Not to get too personal And like you know I don't be really na- Name dropping And shit like that But Um I'm affiliated with like some some heavy people. Okay. You know what I mean, like you know, and I don't really be, you know, broadcasting that because this really ain't what my company is yeah. about or whatever the case may be. But I was I was definitely involved. You know what I mean? I didn't do nothing just, you know, just for clout or nothing like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? As a kid, I was being a kid, but I was like I was I was bad outside, but I was mm-hmm. good in the crib. You yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> so. With that being as like I just kind of like all my cousins was basically the gang over there, you right. know what I mean? the okay. biggest gang over there. So all the family was you know already there. So whatever I needed to get involved in, if I had beef with anybody, I really didn't have to embrace it. I just you know run to my older cousins or whatever. Okay. Like yo, you know I got this issue, or the case may be, and it be handled. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that family time. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Shout yeah. out the family. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was up. It was up. It was decent. You know, it's it's always crazy because like we grow up in these environments, like you say, so it, it, it seems so normal to us, you know. And mm-hmm. for the people that aren't in our communities, they always look at it like, man, that's like a horrible situation to be in. But us growing up in it, we think it's normal. Yeah. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So how how did growing up make you say, man, I want to change the narrative? Uh, because like I mean, as you get older, you know, what I'm saying mentally, we we kind of just adapt to different things. You know what I mean? Just as people, like, our, our vision of environment gets bigger. You know, everything gets way more vivid. So um, growing up and seeing, like, more of the world and, and exploring, because I've, I've moved and I lived in a lot of different places. So when I see different cultures in different cities and different states, I kind of, like, always was the person to come back to the hood. You know what I'm saying? Like, see my homies, make sure they straight, make sure they people straight. Because when I got away, I always kind of wanted something different. I wanted something bigger and better for, for my people. You know what I mean? So, like, one to change the narrative is the reason why I kind of started my company, Hip Hop Littles, is because I'm from the hood. I know what it's like being in the hood. I know what it's like to embrace and be around different cultures and things like that. So, with my company, it's kind of like we focus on the um, the five, the main ethnicities, you know what I'm saying? And we basically kind of, we want to generate our characters to be like the best friends, you know what I'm saying, of these different cultures, like yeah. the kids in this culture. So basically, like, that's kind of like where I came from, like, with the whole thing and, like, trying to change the narrative. It's like showing them, like, yo, like, in our hood, we only had who we was around, you know what I'm saying? We had, like, you know, TV and stuff like that. The whole, you know, the generation changed, of course. Mm-hmm. But we only had, like, what we had at that time. And it was really kind of, like, it was easier then to to talk and conversate 
than it is now. Now everything is digital. Yeah. You know what I mean? Social media. Like, you will see somebody in the street, like, you know, uh, uh, even a female, just speaking of, uh, like, you'll see them, like, you'll see at the club, whatever, you'll stare at it the whole time. Mm-hmm. Right, you know, you'll just sit back, you just hit that DM. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> With that, you I just saw. Right, get right. your goofy. All time, right. Look, look. <laughs> and I just want to let y'all know that that shit is weird. Come yeah, say yeah. Hi. yeah. See, I've been, I I been hearing know. about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've been hearing about that. I'm yeah, a, I'm crazy. a been on you if I sent you on my social, especially if you were shaking that ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Hey, shorty, I'm gonna act like I know. You. What's up, folks? Do that little dance you was doing on? No, nah. nah, oh, I'm only in your private. My bad. <laughs> I shouldn't told everybody. No, nah, my bad. <laughs> yeah, all the time. And that's the thing too. It's like you know you don't have that comfortability no more. You know what I mean? So like that's what my whole company is about. It's like understanding like you know people that's that there are people that's like you. You know what I mean? As far as like growing up, like your kids, like we relate to kids and we focus on the kid community. You know what I mean? I'm not a streets advocate, but at the end of the day. I do want to be an advocate for the kids to get them to understand like you do have people that's out here that can relate to you personally. Facts. So our characters relates to they're like it's the hip hop culture, but at the same time, the um the general aspect of like learning different kids and them being able to adapt to somebody that's their age, it's like one of the most important things because like right now the media is so it's reckless. Wow, shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know wow, what I mean? Shit. So reckless, yeah, yeah. So we kind of focus on that, so they can have that comfortability and that 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 develops the change that we looking for in the future. You know what I mean? Yeah, what's up? It's your girl, Pretty Riot, and I'm sitting pretty starting riots right here on Illinois Radio. And every single week, you come and you watch these great interviews, and you still ain't subscribed. What What are you doing? Hit the subscribe button and turn the notification bell on too. Now, yeah, yeah. this is my question. What what did you come up with Hip Hop Little from? Because I saw you was an artist as well. So yeah. how did all this come about? Oh, y'all was the homework, huh? Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. We, I was checking out. I got some questions on some of these songs, too. Hey, well, go ahead, that? bro. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Hey, cut the camera. Yo, cut the camera. <laughs> go ahead. I got some questions, hey, though. Cut the camera. All right. Uh, no doubt. Nah, Hip Hop Little is basically... Uh, I started Hip Hop Letters like with music, so kind of like the first character Hip Hop Letters came from like me just doing like a like some um, like a song like cover art. You know what I mean, I kind of like took it was like man, like this might be decent as like a little clothing brand just for the for the uh, for the label. Okay. So it went from basically like from the label to like man, I probably can make a whole brand out of this. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So at that point, it was like I started creating the clothing line from, and then. It was like, okay, Hip Hop Little's Clothes are Cold Kids, you know what I'm saying? Definitely uh, get in tune with it. But then at the same time, it's like, you really think about it business wise. Like, the thing about kids, like, you got to get them something to articulate, something, mm-hmm. something to be like, I want that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Right. And at that point in time, like, you know, my music, of course, I mean, I'm an underground artist. So it was like, I ain't had nothing that really relates to the kids, which is like a kid brand. So I had. For what I've heard. Yeah, yeah. We so just be right. checking out. Hey, we'll look, we stand on topic. We stand on topic, right? Music was hella sexy. We stand on topic. You know what I'm saying? Music was hella sexy. I mean, they're just... like, what are you talking about? What is time? Like, what? Like, <laughs> like, when, <laughs> when this song come out? <laughs> like, hold on, this hip hop littles? Well, no, okay, go ahead, Doc. Hey, look, hey, I'm calling YouTube tomorrow. <laughs> look, look, I'm letting them know, like, look, some on of this need to be monetized. Spotify? Yes. yes, sir. Spotify caught me lacking. That was, you know what? The whole thing was Spotify. Like, I got in tune with somebody that like, was major that was like, major, like, he was connected, like, with Flock and them, um, DJ Speedy. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, he was like, we was cool. We was bumming the whole time. And uh, it, it ain't work out because, you know what I'm saying? It was kind of like a finesse at the end of the day. It was it Speedy? And then I saw CB Max also? CB Mix? Mix. C- yeah, yeah. CB, uh, Chris. Chris Bennett, yeah, like he he major, like he uh, right now he little pump engineer. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that's, yeah. that's my okay. man. It's like we still yeah. we still fish you. You know what I'm saying? We chop some time. Um, but yeah, so I kind of like had to take it from there. Like I ain't had nothing to really relate to the kids, mm. you know, as far as brand or whatever. So then I came up with the uh, animation and stuff like that. So now we kind of to the point where it's, we working with like um, the 3D animation, like Disney movies. Mm-hmm. So we basically kind of converting the whole company into like an uh, entertainment company. 
Mm. So Hip Hop Littles, yeah, Hip Hop Littles be like a whole entertainment company. We do like a lot of work with like uh, charities and organizations, like c- even even entrepreneurs, creative CEOs that's throughout the throughout the city. Mm-hmm. If they got like events for kids or anything like that, and they want us to come support, donate, show up. Like we definitely be there for mm. just to support through the city. You know what I mean, like yeah. I, I'm big on like supporting my people and everything that we do in Chicago. So I'm trying to like really connect with everybody and anybody because i have a lot of connections myself and people nowadays always trying to hold the plug like you right. never know Facts. you know what i'm saying like i'm right. saying it like we in the 80s here you go you yeah. get it you get it is this to pass out mm-hmm. yeah. that's how i like, feel that's though. how it should be for yeah. real that's like, how everybody grow yeah on exactly everybody. like you could put me on to somebody like like somebody be like yeah i got this going they'd be like you know what i'm, I'm Modelo or do this, you know what I'm saying? Like this would be decent for him. like, bro. I ran into somebody who do such and such, such and vice versa. Mm-hmm. Holding on to the plug would never get rich, and I yeah. think that's one of the main things in our cultures. We never want to look out for the next person, mm-hmm. especially with within our like I say within our culture. So it's like, man, why why hold on to the plug? Yeah. Like, I get on, no doubt, and I'm gonna put you on. Like, oh, you looked out for me. This for you, you know what yeah. I'm saying? I don't want nothing back from it. This is off the strength, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Because you came through with the plug. I mean, I was able to generate this from from what you sent to me. That's real. And go from there. You know what I'm saying? But that's the problem. Like I'm, I don't, I don't like. That. I'm, I'm real business. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I'm big on that. I'm big on creating relationships with anybody that I work with. So, like social media, I'm always showing love. Like you know, my, I have my whole team. Like if I follow you, follow you, follow you. Guess what? Next time you gonna see my whole team gonna follow you. Okay. You know what I'm saying my my company, my assistant, my event planner, my photographer, director, everybody's going to follow you because it's like me being like I could be a you know I could be an entrepreneur, but it's a difference between the entrepreneur and the CEO. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You could be an entrepreneur, you're like, okay, I got this business. This business name, your name being on that paperwork makes you the entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. But being a CEO, that means you can't be a CEO until you got a team. You got you te- you checks, you feeding people. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? You got people that's working with you to create this company. Now you could be a CEO because you don't have to work as much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what makes you a CEO. You put everybody else I mean? in position to do them other positions because Ex- that's you executive. So you know. Exactly. You chief executive. <laughs> exactly, uh, come yeah. On. yeah. So you got to, yeah. you know, you got to be able to put on your people. So, like, even like my whole team, like, we, you know, we have our debacles, don't get me wrong. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, you know the love is what you know. We the love for what we do is what keep us together. You know what I'm saying? We don't we don't beef like that. Well, we you know disrespect one another or whatever. Or we like off brand the company, yeah. but you know we stay focused on you know the general aspect of what we about and whatever debacles we have amongst each other. We take that personal when we just have that conversation. You know what I mean? And I think that's another thing too with people and, and having difficulties. It's like it's really just a conversation. No doubt. You know what I mean? I agree. I say just throw the gloves on. Look, look. <laughs> what you say, fam? Just yeah. put the gloves on. Let's go out here. Because I've been waiting to whoop that ass anyway, cook, you know. Yeah. And then we get back to the money. Like, after, I got you did after after Thanksgiving. Scrap- I got to knock your ass out real quick. Real yeah. fast. I ain't like that comment that you said last week about my shoes. I know how much I paid for them joints. <laughs> No, I've got too personal about it. My yeah, bad. I mean, you don't really play out that way sometimes. Because, like, you know, people people, people hate to lose. Yeah. You know oh, what I mean? yeah, so yeah, regardless nah. of whatever it may be, people just hate to lose. And if you're afraid to lose, you will, you will never be able to be successful because you got to lose. That come with it. It comes Damn. with it. Yeah, I'll it comes take with that. the territory Damn. for sure. Lost lessons, all that, man. You got to take that when you come, when you're trying to build something for real, for real. Yeah. So I, speaking on loss, what is yeah. some of the losses you've had to take and bring in pretty much everything together, music, animation, photography, just creating the company, I guess. What are some of the losses you had to take? Money. Yeah. <laughs> That'd that's be the like, main thing. That's like the main thing is money. Yeah, no like, like, like me, I'm to the point, like, I don't really care about how much money I lose because... I feel like you got you got to lose money in order to make money, right? Okay. So, I I me I'm to the point is the advice I give people is never invest in something you wouldn't do for free. Mm. Yeah. Exactly, you got to be that passion. Yeah. I feel yeah. you. I feel yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. To drop a bomb yeah. on that shit. Yeah, yeah. 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 I feel yeah. like I feel like never, never, never invest your money in something you wouldn't do for free because at the end of the day. Anything that you do for free, it's like, you know, like you said, like it's your passion. That's really what you really just, you do it because you love it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And whatever people get from it, 
they'll be able to embrace and they'll be able to understand exactly where you're coming from. Because they'll be like, yo, you get paid from this? You'll be like, nah, I just, it's what I love to do. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, like, we go out and help people. We go out, like, we donate, we, you know, whatever money, whatever the case may be. We do it because that's just what we love to do as people. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um, I've I've lost a lot of money, but I don't really ever think about it. Like, oh, yeah, like, damn, I lost 6000 just yeah. doing this. You know what I'm saying? But it'd be like, to me, it'd be like, I love to, I love to be in certain rooms. I love to be able to connect with people. I love, you know what I'm saying, being able to indulge and be able to, like, see where other people come from. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, that was one of the losses money, and I lost a lot of friends, too. Yeah. I mean. What was the, the friend losses about? Like, just they didn't have the same vision? Was it like a Jay and Dame type of thing? Uh, I mean, oh, damn. <laughs> she said Jay and Dame. Jay and Dame. <laughs> you, know, like, you know what? It's, it's, it's not like a Jay and Dame, but that's, that was nice. It's not like a Jay and Dame thing because that was more like they had a business relationship. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Me personally, like, I lost I lost friends over just us being yin, yin, yang. Okay. You know what I mean? At the end of the day. I can so, see that. Yeah. I don't really worry about it too much. You got, like, a, a, a growth outset, a growth mind state. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. How long have you been in the game? Because it, it, it takes years to, you know what I'm saying, be able to reflect and look at life like you looking at it. You feel me? So how yeah. long you been, you know, doing the hip-hop littles? Uh, hip-hop littles, man, I, I think I've been... Basically, growing and building the Hip Hop Littles franchise, a company for about, I said about a good three years. Okay. I mean? But. So after the music? Yeah. Okay. Like, you know, not saying that I wasn't good at music, because I really love music, and mm-hmm. that's just what I like to do. So I'm kind of incorporating both. I will be in the studio writing music and everything like that, but it'll just be a lot different, because it'll be more of a kid aspect. Okay. Mm. You know what I mean? But it'll be still lyrical content yeah. as well. You know what I mean? Um, so I've been building that for like a three years strong. So like 2016 is really when I started the idea, 2016, 2017. And I kind of took, you know, took everything that happens to me personally and then, and implemented it into the company. You know what I mean, so like the characters, so like my whole, um, resonation or whatever, it's from music, it kind of like, Put me at a point where it's like I wanna, I wanna do something that's gonna bring people together. My whole music, you know what I'm saying? Like it's whole, it's like a lot of love stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yes, it is. So, <laughs> so, 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 <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> so, hey, but I, I, not to cut you up, I like red the, bottoms though. Look, look, red, look. Now, 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 I did have a question though with red bottom. Yeah. It, who is that singing in the chorus? That's uh my boy Reese from Three Piece. That's what we. Yeah. I said this sound like Three Piece in the background. I, I owe you. A, I owe you one dog. food stamp. I got you. I got you. Okay, then we better one food stamp. They yeah. still got food stamps. Yeah, that's my boy. We um we we linked um through CB Mix as well. Um, Dirty Shock, you no know, Do a Dime kind of. I mean, someone like all them. Mm. You know what I mean, back then when we was making music, and um. I was I'm good as an artist, but I, I also know that I still have a lot of learning to do. Mm-hmm. I mean, and me, I'm always open to learning a lot of different things. So, like I said, like my resonation for music, creating hip hop littles, it kind of put me in an aspect whereas knowing, just basically knowing, like I'm a I'm a lose everything before I gain anything. Okay, mm. you know what I mean. Mm. Okay, yeah, yeah, in the building. So, <laughs> hey, <sorry. laughs> All right, now, so I I do got a question with the um with the clothing and stuff. Yeah. Are you the um the main designer, or do you have a designer team? I'm the visionary. Everything that you see, create like so. I have a team of uh people. So like animation, me, I act out everything. So I act out like anything just to give them reference. Okay. Um, I act out everything. I basically sketch out like whatever designs as far as like the company. Okay. So like what happened is okay. So I have a designer as well. She do like a, like she's more like an artist. Right. She's like do vector art and stuff like that. So I'll send her out the sketch and the idea and the description, and she'll basically basically you know draw it up or Put whatever. Put the rest of the life to it. Send it back to me. I break it down in Kit Kats, and then I create my designs for hoodies, t-shirts, and mm, everything like okay. that. So basically, nothing really moves without without me. CEO, you, know? you feel me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. so is it just the kids' clothes, or do you plan on expanding? 
Uh, I mean, we have clothes for everybody, like okay. as far as size wise. You know okay, what I'm okay. So like right now, we got a new collection coming out next spring that I'm working on right now. It's called a. Um, it was all a dream collection. Okay. So basically, oh. what that is. Okay. Yeah. So okay. basically, what like it was the all a dream. Yeah. Dream, yeah. Dream, so what we dream. did, we took like um, like influential hip hop. Uh, songs from like the 90s and early 2000s mm-hmm. and I kind of redesigned them with the hip hop little characters so like we have like Aaliyah you know that's going to be one of the hoodies mm. uh, the song is going to be the uh, Try Again but I'm going to reiterate it and redesign it to where it would be Zoe which is one of my characters she'll look just like Aaliyah on the hoodie you know what be crazy. I'm sorry to cut you off so, I wanted to ask were yeah, those yeah, yeah. real people so I saw on the website you got Jordan and Ryan yeah, that's and you a, got yeah. Zoe yeah so they they not real people <laughs> they not, they not real people I wanted to know <laughs> but uh, they very relative so what I like I was talking about before like I wanted kids to be able to relate to these characters yeah so like Zoe Zoe's like the model Right, okay. so the hip hop littles, we have like five main characters, mm-hmm. five six main characters, okay. okay, and they all kind of relate to moguls in the hip hop industry. So okay. like Jordan is the rapper, known as the singer, is always the model. Mm-hmm. Juan, he's the videographer. Okay, and, you know what I mean. And then we have okay. like Ryan, which is like his hype man, right? You know, and that's his best friend. Okay, so we kind of like relate everything to like the hip hop community, but at the same time, we want like they have like. Uh, personality traits of this everyday kids. So Zoe, her, she's she's a model, right? But you know how you get those kids that love to like take pictures and like mm-hmm. when they with their mom or whatever, they 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 cold with it. They go crazy, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But then like once you put them in a the crowd of people, they like, yeah, they oh, different. I, yeah. I, I don't want to take them pictures. <laughs> right. And she's like the same way. She's like she lacks confidence. You know, Zoe lacks confidence. Mm. She loves to model. But she she wants to be the advocate for girls who like confidence. Okay, themselves. you know what I mean. So that's fire. Yeah, yeah. I like that. So because uh, I see uh-huh. I see you just it, did you just the Jordan uh, first day that you just dropped that. Nah. So okay, Jordan first day is my first children's book. Okay, I've, I've written five books. Oh damn. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I've written five children's books. Jordan first day is the first one. So all of my books rhyme. So they they basically are rhyming books. Cause, because kids relate to things that they can remember. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So if you get them a book where it's rhyming and it's like making sense to them and you read it all the time, they're going to remember things like that. Like, oh, okay, this word goes with this word and this. And like it's teaching them agriculture as well. Mm. So, you know, we're teaching them like the poem, um, like the... Um, can't, the scheme like the poem scheme so it's okay. like A, B, A, B, A, A, A you know what I'm saying so we kind of like doing that at the same time but also giving them that um, them, those those um, educational lessons at the same time because Jordan's first day is basically about Jordan going his first day of school mm-hmm. and he runs into a everyday situation mm-hmm. you know what okay. I mean I can't really expose what's going to happen in the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The book. <laughs> so when you get the book, you know what I mean. It's it's you, it's definitely something that you know you should you know share with like with your kids and your nieces yeah. and nephews and everything like that. And it's definitely reasonably priced as well. So what can um, I get? Put a lot of effort into it. You'll be able to get it like Amazon. You'll be able to get it from uh, Barnes and Noble. Uh, we got like contracts with a lot of people. Though. Okay. So, so like January, it'll be it'll be up for up for sale. Yo, what's up? It's your girl, Pretty Right, and I need you to do one sm- smiley. <laughs> Yo, what's up? It's your girl, Pretty Right, and I just need you to do one small favor for me. Head on over to your app store, search I L L A N O I Z E. Hit the first thing that pops up because we the one and only, and download the Illinois app. With everything going on, do we have a time? Do we have time for Miss Modelo? Miss Mandela, you know what? I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said that because that kind of like me. I'm a, I'm a very very, uh, I'm very big on like, what way like like relationships, right? Mm-hmm. So like when people like when you date people and you start talking to people, whatever the case may be, it's kind of like me. I'm the type of person like don't tell me because you know what people always be like, man, I won't do this, I won't do that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'm big on like, don't tell me what you won't do tell me what you will do oh no you know Thanks. what I mean because like the things that you will do are the things that are hurt me you know what I'm saying so those are the things that I'm more interested in don't tell me what you won't do 
Because, okay. like, everybody always comes into that whole, like, I don't do this to you. You know, I know you've been through this. I know you've been through that. And it's like, nah, I need that shit to you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I will slap exactly, the shit yeah. out you if you play with me, woman. No, I'm just, yeah. no, I don't promote that. My bad. Look. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> tell, me, tell me what you will do because, like, like I said, like those are the things that are hurt me. So mm-hmm. those are the things that I need to know about. Yeah, you know what I mean, so rather, regardless of what it is, so like a Miss Madel, I mean, never know. You know what I mean, what the future may hold, but like, honestly, like she just got to be able to understand my focus. You know what I mean, at the end of the day, I'm True. not really, you know, me. I'm like a lot of people nowadays are like so big on finances. You know what I'm saying? Don't get me wrong. Like you know, certain things are like a financial agreement. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, like marriage. I think marriage is a financial agreement. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't really think it's a, a, a emotional, you know, bond that you have with somebody. That I think love it's and completely shit. financial. Because that bond could grow without that piece of paper. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I'm big on. I'm not big on titles. Yeah. Because like you know, I feel like like homies, like best friends, like you can love me and still and still kill me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You can miss me and still kill me. Nah, yeah. if you kill me, <laughs> you know what if you, nah, if you kill me, you ain't never love me. I ain't. Hey, when people ain't say that, I had to snap. look. I had to yeah. look at him again. Like, no, that motherfucker ain't loved you. If he murked your ass, he yeah. never they call loved it a, they you. They call it a crime of passion, yeah. bro. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's what. That's the in love. That's what you with a female. But your homies, if they snake it, that nigga ain't love you. That's how I feel about that. Now, for a female, yeah, because I've, I've been around those guys. You know, you come in, oh, my yeah. gosh, he did it. And he choke her out. Or, you know, <laughs> bogus as hell. Don't yeah. give, you know what I mean? That is, you know, you blank out. But your yeah. homie, when he snaked you, he ain't love you. That man been looking at trying to get at you. And he saw, damn, you finally made it before I did. I'm on his ass. Like, that's yeah. my thoughts on that. But, yeah, yeah no. Nah. I mean, but, yeah, that's why I kind of like, when it comes to friends, I'm big on um, I'd rather have loyalty than love. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like, and and people has this thing nowadays that want to be feared. I don't want to be feared. Yeah, I don't want. I don't want nobody to fear me. People that fear yeah. you will kill you. That's yeah. what I was saying. Yeah. Say fear get you killed. Yeah, yeah. motherfucker so, scared of you. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I, don't I think you might that. do something mm-hmm. anytime, even when you ain't trying to do shit. Mm-hmm. So yeah, no, nah. just love me. Yeah. Love me and had that loyalty. You feel me? And we gonna respect each other. Just you did. Loyalty, man. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I'm big on that. So I, I respect can. that because a lot of people, like, they, they don't understand what loyalty means. Loyalty means we could beef and still be cool, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We could have a misunderstanding and not be taken there, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Or we could have a disagreement and we may not talk for a couple months, but it's still love, you yeah. feel me? Yeah. It, ain't, it ain't no hard feelings behind none of that. And I feel like that's the hardest place to grow in business yeah. is doing business with your homies. Because eventually that can grow into resentment. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah, it Jealousy. will. It will. Because, I mean, you think about it like like information. Information without understanding is nothing, right? So it's like, you know, your homies, like y'all can go in business together and somebody's not going to be as passionate as you. you know what I mean, you're going to have like your team of people, like even my team. You know what I'm saying? They're not as passionate as me. About what I do because I'm the creator, so there's no way they have the same entity as me. They mm-hmm. have the same feelings. It's your vision, right? So, like the things that I see, they may, you know, the concept. They may love the concept, but they'll never be able to really have that emotional connection that I have with the idea. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, I can respect that. You know what I'm saying? I understand that they're not going to move the way that I move. They're not going to do certain things. They're not going to be as prompt as I am, you know, with certain situations. But that's okay because by me already having that understanding, it's just like just do your part. You know, I'm not looking for you to to conquer the vision Mm -hmm. or anything like that. I just want you to do your part. No, you won't be here before reason. Now I got a question because yeah. you know I, I, I read a lot too. Yeah. Now is that because they don't have a vested interest in it? Because I, I like, I like some successful people that I've saw. One of their ways to get people to be on that same level because like like you say, it, it's your dream, it's your vision. Yeah. So of course, certain people won't work to that that standard that you want, right? Yeah. But sometimes they say if you get them, they 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 become investors or they get parts and part back of it. Then they start like again. They're not gonna work your that vision, but they might come up with their own type of vision for what you got going on. They can help excel the brand, and you know what yeah. I mean. Like yeah, you got yeah, a video yeah. arc for like you got your video arc for. He want to make sure that it's the the shit. 
And that's so he it, goes yeah. study something yeah. like you know what you want to see, but he goes study. He come show you a filter like click watch this bang. I'm like nigga what. Right. Bro, but damn. that's that's the thing. That's you why you don't never like if you start in a company, you never like even like regardless of whatever you don't like here at the radio show, the podcast, right? Like any company, you want to hire people who love what they do. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? They they don't have to love what you do because what you do is what you love. That's your vision. You want to be able to excel their vision, so you want to be able to part part partake in whatever that they love so like my videographer he loves to record videos he loves to take photos he loves editing that's that's what he loves to do so you hire him for that position you don't be like yo you're a videographer yo i need you to be a promoter in fact you know what I'm <laughs> like <laughs> yo you look at me like Put like, Della, like that win. ain't that ain't what i do you know what i'm saying yeah so just like yeah you know you being a radio host you love to talk you love to meet people you love to conversate you love to ask questions you love to learn Anybody who loves conversation loves to learn. So you're not going to want to be the, the advertising, the marketing executive. You're like, yo, that ain't what actually, I do. Like, actually, you know, actually, he like, is the advertising. Well, I, 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 was, I was saying, like, if that's what you if that's what you here for, then that's cool. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But if it ain't, no, I'll follow you. I follow. Yeah, you. if yep. it ain't what you love to do, you're gonna like you're gonna half ass it. So what is the point of being there? Yeah, that's like. Putting a putting ten years into a job that you knew you hated, yeah. and not mm-hmm. putting ten years into your passion, exactly, and looking back on it with regret. You know what that, I'm saying? They complain every damn day. Yeah, Fact. you got to make their money work for you. That's oh, how I look at it. Whatever job you have, like you can hate your job, but you have to, you know, have to understand it. Like you can go if you can get up every day and work eight hours at a job. If you got a passion, why can't you do the same thing? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You get off, you're supposed to put eight hours into your own company as well. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I mean, don't get me wrong. Days you can be exhausted, you can be tired. That's that's normal. You know, you can be, you can have doubt. That's normal. I don't like when people say, like, you got to believe. You just got to know. Like, to me, that's. <clears throat> It's unrealistic. It, it is to me. It, it's so. <laughs> that's a blanket statement. That's, that's why I feel with yeah. it when they do. It's like a blanket statement because you don't tell me about. Wait, what about that day when I wake up? Because like you, you in an environment. You yeah. personally, me personally, could be on that. This is what I. This is what I want to do. I know yeah. I want to do this. But you in an environment. Uh, you can't do that shit. That yeah. ain't happening. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like you get bombarded with that. Even though I don't care how you wake up and say your mantras in the morning and, and you look in the mirror and all that. Sometimes you have to, you know what I mean? You need yeah. that. You need a team sometime around you. To, yeah. Hey, bro, you know, call up your people because you get hit upside the head all the time. And and the people don't tell them, oh, yeah, no, I just, you know, I, I, I thought about I was positive every day. Mm-hmm. What about that day when your account was, what about that day when your account was negative? <laughs> yeah. You were still, oh, you woke up like, you know, that's a negative fat that it's going to be a positive fat meal. You know, bro. It My stomach change. was hurting. When I was Dang, that's when you find out who you are, though. You yeah. You feel me? Yeah. Those days that's fucked up. Yeah, on yeah, everything. You push through it. That, yeah. that be his character, for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah so you got to, you know, you got to be able to just relate to, like, the reality of everything. You know what I mean? So that's just kind of like with me. Like, me, I don't like to, like, right, me being here today. You know what I'm saying? If I walk out of this room and I feel like y'all ain't learned nothing from me, I feel like I was there for no reason. I feel you. Know so if I'm here and y'all like take some like bro, when bro said that, that shit kind of like it made me think about something. You know what oh, yeah, that was real. So like then I feel then I'm happy. I'm glad that I was here. But if y'all didn't really get nothing from me, then what was my point? You know what I hear in my head every time you you talk though, bro. I hear. Hip hop littles for the kids, just like how Wu Tang for the kids. That, <laughs> yeah, I, that's yeah. what I feel, bro. Like yeah. for the kids, and you know, if yeah. you for the kids, you for the generations. Yeah, because if you get the youth and you can help mold that man some type of way, form or fashion, bro, you yeah. gonna see that down the line, man. No matter how it come back to you, gonna see it. If it don't yeah. come back to you directly, it come back in the form of. In the universe, you know, one of them kids be like, "Yeah, man, you know, he he's somebody playing ball." Like Joe, yeah, man, you know, I just want to shout out hip hop little. Like what? The? Hold on, Joe. Like yeah, it'll, yeah, it'll yeah, blow yeah. you. That like, was the times you know, that I look yeah. for. Like, we, we did a parade and we did a parade one time, and then we did a we did a, a trunk or treat as well. So after the trunk or treat, it was like the Christmas parade, and then there was a kid that told my event planner, like, like, hey, I remember them. That right there was like, okay, now. I'm yeah, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, you know what I'm some you gotta have those moments that let you know, like, yeah. this is what I'm here for. You know what I mean, it took a long time, but it happens. All right, bro, this is my favorite question right here. I got you, sir. If you can go back and give your younger self any advice, mm. what would it be? 
Oh man, if I could if I can go back, give myself, my younger self, any advice. Honestly, it'll be um, be careful on who you love. You know what mm. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. For real, like as when we're young, you know, we adapt to people, and we just because you know they may be giving us whatever we need at that point in time. Mm-hmm. And growing, it's like the people that you love the most be the people that hurt you the worst. So that's why I probably would tell myself, you know, what I'm saying, if I was younger, because like. Real talk, people that's in your life are very influential. You know, rather you rather believe it or not, it's like you love a person, you can, you know, they're very influential. Like whether they're around now or not, you learn something from them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And if you if you love them just that much, you'll always remember whatever it is that they taught you. You know, new relationships, friendships, whatever the case may be. It's like, you know what, this person did this to me. And me, I have a, a huge thing about people don't change, we adapt. So, you know, whatever when you was born, you was born to be who you are. You know what I mean? So whatever situation you're in, you're gonna always be that person. You know what I'm saying? So you date somebody new, new friendships, you're gonna adapt to that person as a person. You know what I mean? And then like when they're not around no more, it's like you're still who you are, but you adapted to whatever type of energy or um environment that you was around. You know what I mean? You're always gonna be you and that's one thing I definitely tell myself. That's a fact. All right, now, before we get out of here, tell the people how they can get in tune with you, stay in tune with you, find everything. Yeah, yeah, on. yeah. Uh, for me personally, my uh, Instagram CEO is at OK Modelo. Instagram, uh, Instagram for Hip Hop Littles, at Hip Hop Littles. Instagram, website, Facebook, yeah, Snap, all that. Same thing, at Hip Hop Littles. All right, man. It's, it's been great talking to you, bro. Yeah. Because coming into this, like, shout out my boy Jones. I remember Jones tried to set up something with, with my radio show, Ill Sound Radio. You feel I mean, me? What's signing up, man? We here. You know, hey, man, we could, we could connect, you feel me? Because I got a lot it. of shit going on. I'm here you know for what it. You I'm saying? I'm here for it. But it, to, to sit and hear you speak and know where you started from, a lot of us come from the same places, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. the, the journey of life take us all different places, you know what I'm saying? Whether yeah. we meet back up again or not. Like all us got a story to tell. Everybody in this room got a story to tell. We got yeah. some positive to, you know what I'm saying, to to pass on to people, just like you say. And I feel like that's what's great about an interview, bro. It gives somebody an opportunity to learn about you, know about you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm shit. I'm happy how this shit worked out, man. man mm-hmm. I'm, For the show. I'm glad to be here. And I, I refuse to not let us uh, not allow us to be in the same room again. So whatever it is that you got going on, like Set it up I'm there I got mm-hmm. you man Y'all wanna say anything else Before we get up out of here Man It's been a pleasure What's up What's up You know, you know? <laughs> Hip hop little for the kids Definitely oh, Definitely yeah, we have, we have. Definitely oh, yeah, Definitely man Whatever Whatever y'all If y'all even got events going on Or anything y'all got going well, on Well of course Since you said something <laughs> <laughs> November 16th Pop out to Chicago's Got talent After work mixer 3 Hosted by who Your boy Wow That be me Smash nice. cash home man Y'all make sure y'all come through We're gonna be at the Wild here 2016 North Halsted If you okay. not Get there Chicago Hey if, I'm yeah. gonna let you know right now Not even to cut you off Go ahead like, not not to be like that, but we come, bro. You gotta have a section, though. We gotta be catching though. It's a, it's a section for you, bro. Come on, we in there, man. Let me we know. in there, we, yeah, we in there. I'll be I'll be gotta be good. We gotta be sectioned off in the building, bro. People be tweaking sometimes. I gotta protect my team. I first. feel you, bro. You I know feel what I'm saying? When you say you, section, how many we talking? Nah, it ain't gotta be like a huge section, but you know what I mean. At the okay. end of the day, like we okay. just gotta be, you know. When we get there, like we got to be on the list, so we don't want like sit outside. None and all of that. that. We got you. You pull up. We yeah, got yeah. vendors. Like I said, it's a pop up shops um, showcase. So we got vendors that's gonna be in the building okay. with their merchandise and stuff like that. Then yeah. also later on in the night, we got the um, artists that's gonna come up there and do some performing. Man, what's that Saturday night? No, it's on Wednesday. Ah, Wednesday Ooh. ain't ever gonna work during Ooh. the week, bro. <laughs> I'm always Ooh. out of town. Like if you ever want to book anything with me, make sure it's like a Saturday or Sunday. I got you, bro. I got. Saturday we gonna Sunday. keep you in mind, but I'm just throwing that. Out there for everybody, okay. so they can know. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Hey man, with that being said, man, it's Illinois Radio. We gone.